I have managed to up my camera game. Now, it focuses when I need it to focus without me having to use a tennis racket. All right, let's get started with the video. As my channel gets a bit bigger, I want to make you all aware of a few different types of businesses that you could go into. And I know my channel is predominantly print on demand, but I want to make you aware of four different business types that you guys could go into that I have had success in. And I'm going to compare those four different business types for you today. And by the way, I'm shooting this video on a Monday. The video is going live on Tuesday because I, sh I post on Sunday, Tuesday and Thursday. I may have hit 10,000 subscribers by then. I don't know if I have. Thank you. If I haven't, that was a bit awkward. And I guess let's just get past it. So what are those four businesses that I'm going to compare with you today? Well, the first one is print on demand. The second one is Amazon FBA. The third one is affiliate marketing. And the fourth one, fourth one is going to be info products. So selling info products. Now, in order to keep this video from dragging on and being a half an hour, 40 minute video, I want it to be quick and snappy. So I'm not going to be giving full blown details into each business. I'm just going to be comparing them based on a few simple factors. And if you want to see a more detailed comparison or more detailed uh, look into one of the businesses, then let me know in the comments down below. I take the comments really, really seriously. I try and respond to every single one of them, as you've probably noticed. And if someone requests a certain type of video, I tend to do it. So if you want to see a video, maybe just on affiliate marketing or just on info product creation, then let me know in the comments and hopefully I will get that to you. And again, before we start, if you haven't already subscribed, hit that subscribe button. My name is Shimmy Morris. I'm sure you know, because the channel is called Jimmy Morris. But basically, I make videos on how to make money online with Amazon, with print on demand, with affiliate marketing, with all different types of things. And I hope you enjoy these videos. So before we just continue rambling, let's get straight into the video. I'm using my computer here because I've taken notes on all the different factors just because it's so much easier than to remember everything in my head. But I'm going to compare these four businesses based on a few categories. Startup cost is the first category. Startup work is the second. Ongoing work is the third. Longevity is the fourth, so the shelf life. Um, difficulty from one to 10, and I'll explain what one is and what 10 is, is category number five. And scalability is category number six. And fun factor is category number seven. So those are the seven categories I'm going to com be comparing these businesses in. And like I said, it's going to be a very, very basic comparison. I'm not going to be going into in incredible detail on each business because this video would go on for many hours and I feel like you'd get bored and probably click away and I don't want that because that's not good for the algorithm. I need you guys to keep watching this video, keep liking this video and keep commenting on this video and obviously keep sharing this video. Before you before you think what well, why isn't one of the categories which one makes the most money? What well, I just want to say to you the reason I'm not doing that category is because every business can make however much money, like there's no cap, there's no minimum. You'll find one person making millions from print on demand, another person making millions from Amazon FBA, another person making hundreds of millions, something else like literally you get people making nothing as well from all these different businesses. So I didn't think that was probably an accurate, you know, comparison to say which one makes the most money because it's just, you can't really compare businesses like that. So like I said, let's start with startup costs. And we're going to start with print on demand. Print on demand has around three to five hundred dollars, I would say, startup costs, which you can use for advertising. And if you do it on Teespring, then it's pretty much free. But if you want to create your your print on demand business through Shopify, then it's going to cost you a bit extra because obviously Shopify costs every single month upkeeping that and, and all of that. So is my audio working? Yes. Phew. Woo. Right. So that is startup cost for uh, print on demand. Okay. Affiliate marketing, depending on how you do it, the, um, there's not really that many startup costs. And the way I suggest doing it is through YouTube videos and blog posts and all these kind of things, like doing reviews of products and tools and being affiliates of all of these different products. Then in that case, there is pretty much zero startup costs because it doesn't cost you anything to make a YouTube video, especially if you have a phone. Like literally you can create a YouTube video today and it could be viral tomorrow. Obviously that's not very likely, but you never know what could happen. Right. Amazon FBA, this probably has the most startup costs, the highest, the largest, the biggest amount of startup costs. I would say if you are 
not looking to take a course and you're just wondering what the startup cost is based on stock and maybe an Amazon account and those kind of things, you're looking at about $1,000, right? And if you do want to take a course, then it's probably like 1500. So maybe if you want to take a course for any of these, add another 500 on top of the startup cost. But I would say Amazon has a startup cost of around $1,000. Okay, the startup cost of an info product is also basically zero because you have to create the product, create the info product, do all of that, and you can sell it without advertising. But if you want to advertise, then that would be your startup cost. But usually with info products, is you you break even on your ads at least at the beginning, and then you start making money. So the startup costs are pretty much nil. But if if you want to get technical here, that looking at maybe like a hundred dollars, one hundred and fifty dollars, they're really, really not that much. With with us, the startup cost was nothing, literally nothing. Right on to the second category: startup work. Now I know you're interested in this one. So print on demand. There's not much work for print on demand startup. There's audience research. There's creating designs. There's creating ads, and then you're repeating like over and over and over and over again, right? That's print on demand, pretty simple, right? Affiliate marketing, there is a bit more because if you're going the YouTube route you and you're creating reviews, you're creating videos, then it can it can, it can take a, a, like a lot of work, especially if you're doing a video every single day. If you're doing a video a couple times a week or a couple times a month, maybe it's not as much startup work, but actually creating a video, like let's say you're reviewing Adobe Photoshop versus um, Canva, right? And your affiliates of both of them, Right, you're going to want the videos to be like good in depth. You're going to want to plan them. You're going to want to create them well. Right, so that in it, the startup work involved in that could be like quite a bit. Right, probably quite a bit. Right, Amazon FBA, the startup work for Amazon FBA. You're looking at well a lot of work because this is a full-on business. Right, you need to find a product. You need to find a supply. You need to sort out promotions for that product and literally everything in between okay like setting up amazon setting up your listing talking to suppliers oh gosh amazon there's a lot of stuff at work but like i said amazon is different it's like a proper business right i mean they're all proper businesses but amazon is just slightly different in the sense that it feels like a proper business right it feels like you're making a brick and mortar shop kind of thing but online and uh, like with your brand and your business and your limited companies and your business bank accounts and, 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 and your products and your suppliers and all of that. It just, there is a bit more work. Right, info product creation. This one has a ton of work, probably the most amount of work across the board with these four businesses. And the reason for that is you need to know what you're talking about. So let's say you have an info product in Amazon, like we do, or teaching guitar or something. You need to understand the topic before you create the course, right? So there's that element which takes a long time, right? Because that's a huge amount of startup work actually learning and, and, and putting into practice and seeing results before you make your info product. And then there's actually creating the info product which is shooting all the videos, teaching, you know, teaching can be really flipping hard at times. And you know, like all of that, all of that, there's just a lot of startup work because you basically got the same amount of startup work as any one of the other businesses, but then on top of that, you're turning it into an educational course, which is difficult in itself. So that one has the most startup work. Ongoing work. Now this is an interesting one because things seem to flip a bit here. Print on demand has a huge amount of ongoing work and the reason for that is it never slows down. You are constantly on repeat audience research, creating designs, creating ads, repeat, audience research, creating designs, creating ads, repeat. You are just constantly, constantly going with that. There's just no break, okay? And even if you have a super successful design, you've got to keep going with it because you might not have a successful design for like another two months, right? So you've just got to keep going with it. Ongoing work with affiliate marketing. This is actually totally up to you. Um, if you have a few successful videos, you could probably take a break, right? If you have some videos that are making you a good affiliate commission, you could probably sit back and relax a bit, not have to like shoot a video as often. I would always recommend being consistent. So if you're shooting a video once a week, continue with that, no matter how successful or unsuccessful you end up being, right? Unless you obviously want to stop because you're not making any money, but stick at it and you'll see what happens. So that one gets like, quite a bit of ongoing work, but like I said, you can decide to do no ongoing work and just make a whole bunch of videos and just see how they do and just 
to do it with them. And as an example, one of my YouTube videos, which I posted, I think over three years ago, has the most amount of views on my YouTube channel and still gets the most amount of views every single month, even though it's three years old. So you really don't know which video is gonna take off and you know make you the most amount of money. Right, ongoing work for Amazon FBA. This is an interesting one because it totally depends on you, right? And what do I mean by that? Well, if you're happy with a certain number of products and maybe a certain level of income, then that's absolutely fine, right? If you're happy with, let's say, 3,000 a month and you're on 3,000 a month and you could you could sit back technically. Like I, I've, I've taken a bit of a backseat because I'm happy with how much we're making. I'm not looking to go and try and make millions every single month from Amazon. I like the pace that we're at, right? So you're able to take a bit of a step back. However, if you want to, you know, continually grow the business, continually add more products, all that kind of stuff, then yes, the ongoing work can be quite a lot because let's say you wanna add a product down the line, you're gonna to have to go through the whole research phase, supplier phase, all of that kind of stuff. So the ongoing work could be quite a lot depending on how you want to run that business. And lastly, info products, the ongoing work with info products. What's my time? I don't, I don't want to keep you for too long. Info products, the, well, this is gonna be similar to the above. It's, it's, it's up to you. Once you have ads running, you could leave it. You could just, you know, have a support team in place, have ads running, be getting constant sales, and then just sit back and do nothing. However, personally, I recommend always trying to grow, trying to make yourself available to your students, like we do with our course, we always wanna be available. So the ongoing work, I would say, th there's a bit of ongoing work, not a crazy amount. Let's say the only ongoing work you do is just talking to students and helping them out. You're looking at maybe an hour or two hours a day. So it's, it's nothing crazy, it's not like the other businesses. So in that sense, the ongoing work is not that bad. Right, nearly finished here. Let's go with longevity. So the shelf life of the business. Print on demand, there's not really a shelf life because you could have a successful design and then it could last a week, it could last a month. Who knows? You have constantly got to be finding new ideas, making new designs. We just, we have no idea with, with print on demand. So the longevity of print on demand, I'm going to say is like, whoop, like basically not there. I don't know what that noise was. Um, but yeah, it's basically basically not there. And let's move on to affiliate marketing. Let me just see, are you still focused on me? I feel like you're not focused on me. Okay, so affiliate marketing, what's the longevity of that? So it's pretty long. However, it's not a crazy amount of time because you have no control of the product that you're affiliate, like promoting, right? So let's say you're promoting Photoshop and then all of a sudden Photoshop changes its prices, it changes everything about it. The video that you made that's going viral and doing so well is now going to be rendered useless because you've explained the whole thing and then they've changed their entire offer, they've changed their entire program. Obviously that's not very likely to happen, but in that sense, the longevity is not that good. However, however, what you could always do is let's say you have a YouTube video and the company changed their offer. You could always update the link in your description that leads to the affiliate offer and you can continually do that for forever basically to keep your your video relevant, okay? So in that sense, the longevity, you can stretch it out a bit, but because you have absolutely zero control of the product that the user is going to be getting, because you're just promoting someone else's product, then I would say the longevity isn't as long as it would be if it was your own business, okay? Because you never know, it could be outdated at any point. Amazon FBA, this probably has the longest, longest longevity of the four businesses. And that's because once you have a product selling, as long as it's a, a need product, not a want product. For example, if you start trying to sell a trendy product like fidget spinners, then yes, you're gonna do well for a bit and then it's just gonna just flatline and you're not gonna make any money. But if you do a need product like things something someone needs, right? There's tons of different products that people need. But if you do a need product, then there's no reason why it won't just continue to sell. I mean, we've been selling our first product that we ever found for the last five years and we're still selling it every single day because we picked a need product that people would always need and it would never go out of fashion style or anything, right? So in that sense, the longevity of an Amazon business can literally last you years, decades. There's no reason why it should ever stop, if that makes sense, okay? And then you've got info product uh, creation. This is a bit of a tough one because it depends, it really depends. If you made an info product like a course, let's say on learning the guitar or, or getting a six pack or riding a bike, then the longevity is forever because things like that don't change. There's, there's, when you learn, like, there's one way to learn how to ride a bike. Uh, there's 
pretty much one way to learn how to play the guitar. I mean, obviously there's lots of ways, but like the way you teach how to learn the guitar, it's not gonna go outdated, right? And the way to get a six pack, it's not gonna like become outdated, right? So in in that sense, the longevity of those, of those types of infra products are longer than anything else, longer than Amazon, longer than anything, right? However, if you have an infra product on, let's say teaching Facebook ads or Amazon or maybe YouTube, how to get big on YouTube, those kind of products will go outdated, will go outdated, will get outdated very, very quickly just because they're constantly changing. Amazon's constantly changing, the YouTube algorithm, everything constantly changing. Facebook ads, they're changing their platform every flipping five minutes. So it's constantly changing and, and, and in order to keep the longevity up, you'll have to always be creating new updated content for that course. So in that sense, the longevity could be there, but you'll have to just always upkeep it with work, which isn't crazy, but if you just left it, then yeah, it would eventually die out. However, with like a guitar course, you could make it and then never ever touch any of the videos or add anything ever. And there's no reason why in 25 years time, someone learning a G chord or a C chord would change from 20 years ago, right? Does that make sense? Let's move on. Let's move on to the difficult level from one to 10. 10 being almost impossible for anyone. And I'm talking about Superman level impossible. And one being pretty much a seven year old could do it in a day. Okay, so you've got quite a big range there, right? Quite a big range. If you've seen Boris Johnson's uh, announcement, it's like the levels one to five for Corona. We don't know what level two, three and four does. But I'm going to actually try and be a bit more um, I'm going to try and explain it a bit more. I don't know why I just added that in. Whoa. It was so irrelevant. Sorry for wasting 15 seconds of your life with that stupid, stupid comment. Right, let's move on. Print on demand. The level I'm going to say is a four. Remember, one is a seven-year-old could do it. A 10 is basically impossible. I'm going to give it a level four because it, it's not that crazy. It's pretty easy. Right, affiliate marketing. I'm going to go with a three because at the end of the day, you are literally just making videos, reviewing other people's products. So it's even easier than print on demand because like you don't really have to even think. And then uh, Amazon, I'm going to give a level six because it's a bit complicated. It's actually quite complicated. You're setting up a business and it ain't easy. So I'm gonna give that a level six. And in for product creation, I'm going to give it a level seven because you have to master the skill that you are teaching. And then on top of that, you've got to teach it as well. So it's got like the, let's say you wanna do a, uh, affiliate marketing. You've got to learn affiliate marketing. So that's a level three, but then you've got to teach it as well, which is super hard. So I'm going to give that business a level seven, but don't, don't be deterred because it's a level seven. It's still a brilliant business. I do it a lot of fun, probably one of my most favorite, but we're going to get to that. Right. Two more factors, scalability and fun factor. Let's talk about scalability. This is a, uh, pretty long video, I'm very sorry. But you know what, hopefully you're enjoying it because it's good content. So scalability, print on demand. This is quite hard to scale because once you find a successful design, there's no saying what the next successful design is going to be unless you branch out with a particular niche. So if you remember, I did the job titles, like I'm a this, what's your superpower? And then I branched out to all different types of job titles. That was the way I scaled and that was pretty good. So in that sense, it's okay, but in the broad term of scaling a business to tons and tons of money, it's quite hard. All right, affiliate marketing, not really scalable in my opinion, and I'm just gonna leave that at that. I, I can't imagine how you would scale it because you don't really have any control over the end product. You, you could add your own product on top of the product you're like promoting, but uh, I don't think it's that scalable. Amazon FBA, hugely scalable, massively scalable, probably one of the biggest ones because you can go to new countries, new stores, you can sell the business, you can go down to TK Maxx and start selling to them, you could go into new products, you could literally, there's an like, there's no cap on how many products you can sell. You can sell one product, you can sell a thousand products, you can sell a million products. So the scalability of Amazon FBA is just huge. Like, it's endless, right? Literally endless. It's just like, whoop, that's, that's Amazon. Right. Info product creation, the scalability, uh, well, it can be a bit, it depends, okay? So you can offer, let's say you have like, a, let's say you're doing the guitar course, right? You can offer private mentoring, private lessons. You could offer second courses. You can offer a course on electric guitar and then acoustic guitar and then the ukulele. Like, that's how you can scale it by having, you can scale your audience. So once you have an audience, you can scale them to new courses, new things. Maybe you could bring out your own guitar or your own set of picks or your own guitar string or your own capo, right? That's how you would scale maybe your own merch. That's how you would scale that kind of business. So it is scalable, but it's a lot of work to scale it. I mean, all businesses are a lot of work to scale it. So um, I'm going to say 
yeah, info products can be quite scalable. Right, fun factor. This is completely personal to me. Um, everyone will find different things fun, but for me, print on demand, I'm gonna start with this one. Well, when I was doing it, it was really, really fun. Um, I kind of died out for me personally. It doesn't mean it will happen to you, but when I was actually doing it, I, I found it enjoyable. I am trying to get back into it, but that'll be for the verdict. Right, affiliate marketing. This is YouTube in my mind, right? For me, like, if I'm doing affiliate marketing, I'm doing it through YouTube, and I absolutely love YouTube. I just love making videos. I love teaching. I love doing this. So for me, affiliate marketing has quite a high fun factor. Amazon FBA, this was my first real business, and for someone who was always into business from, like, the age of 10, doing business in school, doing eBay, doing all these side hustles, creating my first business, like, my proper first business, I loved it so much, and having success with it made it even more fun, and this this had a huge fun factor, just because, like, I can say I'm 25 years old, and I have a proper, legitimate business, like, it's cool. I think it's really cool and I find it really fun. So that's that. And then info product creation. This has without a doubt been my most favorite and it's got nothing to do with money or anything like that. But personally, I absolutely love seeing someone else take what I've said to them and change their life, make money. And the reason for that I think is I, I like to be right, right? I don't know what it is, but I'm very, very competitive. Like I'm, in, I'm so competitive, it's ridiculous to the point where it annoys a lot of people. And um, that, what comes with that competitive, competitivity, competitiveness, is that um, I like to be right. And knowing that I've helped someone who didn't feel like they could be helped or felt like they weren't able to have a successful business, but then I've helped them and they've created a successful business, it's given me something which I find amazing, like inside me, I don't know how to explain it, but I find that so enjoyable. I love it more than anything compared to any of the other businesses that I do. And in general, creating the, 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 the videos, creating the, the help, the info products, talking to people, I find really, really enjoyable as well. So for me, the info product creation is the highest on my fun factor, right? Because like I said, I, I'm, I'm, the fact that I started my own business with Amazon FBA is a high fun factor. But what's even better than that is that I've helped other people start their own businesses, which I love because it's so cool. It's so, so cool. And uh, yeah, those are the fun factors. Let me just quickly do a 30 to 50 second verdict. I just made up those times. I have no idea how long this verdict is gonna be, but it will be quick. Let me just do a quick verdict and uh, then I shall end up this video. So each business has its perks and drawbacks as you can see, right? So I'm not going to pick one of the four businesses and see which is the most fun because they literally can all work depending on who you are, depending on what you want. So I'm not gonna tell you to go to Print On Demand or go to Amazon, think about all four of them, think about what I've said in this video and decide for yourself which one you think you would find the most enjoyable, which one you think you'll be able to do, right? And don't start one, like not try hard, fail and go to another one and then not try hard. Whichever one you do, give it your all and then you'll see some sort of success. If you don't give it your all, then like this is wasted on you anyway. So you have to really put 100% in. I was gonna say 110% in, but then I realized that doesn't make sense. So you just have to put in 100%, okay? And then, so for me, I love Amazon FBA. Uh, I love like the product creation, all that kind of stuff. Um, I love YouTube, probably one of the most because this is just a hell of a lot of fun. And even though I probably am talking to a couple of hundred people now with my videos, I still absolutely love it. And just the, the opportunity that you have with YouTube, the being able to be connected to so many different people across the world, I just, I love that. And then finally, um, print on demand. Yes, print on demand. It was super fun. Unfortunately, I grew out of it and I am trying to grow back into it now and trying to get back into it just be baby steps because I'm doing a lot of other things at the same time. But I mean, that is my verdict really. That all four businesses are fun. Three of them I currently am doing, literally affiliate marketing, well, it's kind of happening in the background of my YouTube. Print on demand, not really doing, that's the one that I'm not really doing properly. Amazon, 100% doing, and info products, 100% doing with my Amazon course. And then print on demand, I'm, I'm trying to get back into it just with baby steps. So that is the verdict. I hope you liked this video. I hope it made sense. Um, like I said, if you have any comments, leave them down below. If you want me to go into any of these four businesses in more detail, then let me know down below because I'm telling you, they're all so much fun. Affiliate marketing is brilliant fun. Info products is ridiculous fun. Like they're all just great fun. And uh, yeah, 
hopefully I'll see you on, uh, what is it today? Well, this video is Tuesday, so hopefully I'll see you on Thursday because I bring out a new video Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday at 5 p.m. British summer time or the other times on my YouTube thumbnail thingy, the, the, the banner. But, um, but yeah, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on Thursday.